Now that the game structure is set up, we can move on to creating the enemies. For this, you'll need to create a new file called enemy.py and put it inside the game folder, just like this. I'll begin by creating an enemy class. I'll say class enemy. And within that, I'll have my constructor, which will be def underscore init. And within here, I pass in the argument self, the position, and the image that I want to use for each enemy. Next, we can assign these variables by saying self.image is equal to image. Then self.rect is going to be derived from that image. So we'll use the get underscore rect method. And lastly, we'll position that rectangle's center at the pause coordinate that we pass in here. And this would be fine for creating a standard Python class. But what I would like to actually use here is a Pygame sprite class. It works in much the same way, but it gives us just a little bit more functionality. So to do that, I need to import Pygame at the top here. So I'll say import Pygame as PG. Just like before, we'll use that PG shorthand. And then to make this enemy class into a sprite class, I simply need to add inheritance. So in here, in these brackets, I add in the name of the Pygame sprite class, which is pg.sprite.sprite. .sprite. And the second sprite starts with a capital S. And this will take the sprite class and it will make it a parent of this enemy class. So the enemy class will inherit all of the functionality that comes as standard within here. At this point, the difference between the classes might not be very clear, but as we go further on, I'll demonstrate what additional functionality this will give us. Now, in addition to calling the sprite class here, we also need to call its init method inside our own classes init method. So just in here, we'll say pg.sprite.sprite .sprite with a capital S, and then we just call init with self inside it. That gives us the enemy class, and that's all we need for now. So we'll go back into our main file, and within here, we need to do a couple of things. First of all, we need to load in an image that we can pass into this enemy class. And I'll create a section down here, just underneath the game window, and I'll say, add a comment to say load images, and this will be enemy underscore image is equal to pg.image.load. And within here, I need to pass the location of that file. I previously touched on these two folders here. So we can have a look at this in a bit more detail. If we go into assets, images, and enemies, we can see that I've got four different enemy images. So for this, I'm just going to load in the first one, which is enemy underscore one. But I'm starting from this root folder up here. So I need to pass in all of this additional folder names. So we'll put in our quotation and we'll say the folder starts with assets forward slash images forward slash enemies forward slash enemy underscore one PNG. Right? So that's the root of how we get through to that image following these folders. And finally, at the end, we add dot convert underscore alpha. If you run this and you encounter an error here that says that a file can't be found, there's a few different reasons why this could be happening. First of all, just check for typos. It could be that you've misspelled one of the letters or the names in here. Secondly, make sure that this file is actually in the correct folder that you've downloaded and set them up correctly. And lastly, another reason for this could be that if you're using an editor, for example, VS Code, you need to make sure that you're opening the folder that I've got here. So you're open within your root folder. You are opening a different folder and then navigating to this one. Because if you do that, sometimes it's also unable to find the files. So now we've got the enemy image and we should be able to create an enemy instance. However, this code here, this class, doesn't appear inside the main file. We need to make sure that we import it right at the top here. From enemy, import enemy. And what this says is go into this file, enemy.py, which is here, and import the enemy class. So you notice the difference between the capital letter and the small e. Now we can create an enemy down here. So after we load the image, I will say enemy is equal to an instance of the enemy class. And then I need to pass in the arguments in the correct order. The first one was position. We ignore the self argument. So the first one is position and then it's the image. For the position, I will pass in X and Y coordinates of 200, 300. And for the image, we just pass in the enemy image that we loaded. Now let's run this just to make sure there's no errors. So everything works fine. We don't see anything displayed at the moment. However, we didn't get any errors. That means that the image loaded correctly and this instance was also created correctly. So to test that, we can say print enemy. And if I run it again, we should see down the bottom it says enemy class and it's a sprite. It appears in zero groups. And that brings us on to the next point, which is groups. So because we're going to have many different enemies in the game, we want to be able to have a way of organizing together and applying all the functionality to them all at once. 
To do that, we will use groups. So above this section, so before I'm actually creating the enemy class, or sorry, the enemy instance, I will add a comment to say create groups. And we will build this over time, but for now, the only group we have is the enemy group. And we'll say that is equal to pg.sprite.group. Now, once I've created my enemy instance, I can add it into this group. We can say enemy underscore group dot add enemy. Now, this functionality is quite similar to Python lists. So if this was a list, you would say dot append and you would include the enemy inside that list. Now we're finally ready to try drawing these on the screen. We'll go into our game loop and underneath this clock dot tick section, I'll add a comment to say draw groups. I'll say enemy underscore group dot draw and the location I want to draw on is the screen. If I run this now, we would expect it to appear on the screen, but still nothing seems to be changing. The reason for that is within this while loop. Throughout this while loop, we will have many different draw methods being called, and all of these will get added to sort of a queue. And the idea is that at the end of the while loop, we want to take all of those things, all of those changes, and update our display with them. So for that, at the bottom of the while loop, so make sure that it's indented once here, we'll say update display, and we'll say pg.display.flip. If I run it again, you can now see this little enemy coming up at the bottom. At this point, some of you may have noticed something here. So I've got enemy group and I'm calling a draw method. But if I go into my enemy class, there isn't a draw method here. I haven't created one. Normally, if you try to call a method that doesn't exist, you will get an error. But in this case, it's working fine. It's taking the images and drawing them on the screen. Well, this is one of the reasons why I've set this up as a sprite class and I've added this inheritance. So the sprite class does have a draw method, as does the sprite group. And by inheriting that through into this enemy class, we add that functionality. We bring it through without having to manually create it. So now, it doesn't matter how many enemies I create, by simply calling this one line and adding them all inside my group, it will automatically draw them on the screen. This just helps to keep everything a little bit more organized and makes it easier to work with large numbers of individual sprites and images. Now let's add a little bit of functionality to the enemy. Let's have a move across the screen. For that, I'm going to create a move method. We'll say define move. It doesn't need any arguments, so we'll just put self inside it. And to move it across the screen, we simply update the X coordinate of the rectangle by say one pixel. So every iteration of, the, of this game, we will move by one pixel to the right. Now let's go back into our game and call this move method. I'm going to do it above the draw section and I will say enemy.move. If I run this, you see the enemy starts to move across the screen. He does leave this trail, but we'll deal with that in a second. Now this is fine because we know that we've got this one instance, but as the game progresses, we're going to have a whole bunch of enemies. So it's not practical to type this out for every single enemy. Of course, we will add them into this enemy group. So what we could do, similar to a list, is say for enemy in enemy group, and then we call this method. So now it's going to do the same thing, but it won't matter how many enemies are in that group. It's going to run it for each one of them for us. And that's fine, but we can simplify this even further. So if you remember from before, the enemy group has this draw method, which we never defined. Well, there's another method, which is the update method, which we also don't need to define. So if I add a comment here to say update groups and I'll get rid of this and I'm going to type it exactly the same way as below. So it's going to be enemy group and now it's going to be update. So if I run this, nothing happens like before, but I don't get an error. I'm able to call an update method. It's just that the update method right now is empty. If I go into my enemy class and I create an update method, then I will override the default one. So I say define update self. And from here, I can call that move method. And over time, as this game develops, this class will grow and we'll have other methods that we'll be able to call from the update method. So now if we run this again, it goes back to how it was before. So the enemy is moving across the screen and it's all being handled by this update method here. I don't need to iterate, I simply call it on the entire group. The last thing then is just to fix this issue with this trail that we're leaving behind. The reason this happens is because we're not clearing the screen in between frames. So every frame, the soldier or the enemy moves across a little bit, but the previous instance remains where it is. So what we need to do is refresh the screen every time. We need to draw something else in its place. So we're just going to draw a background. The easiest way to do that is just to add a section here, which will say screen, which is our game window, dot fill, and that will fill it with a color. So I'm going to call gray 100, run it again, and now we fill it with a white background every frame, and we add the enemy moving across seamlessly.